Hey everyone, I'm Kate from Project Patterns. If you're new here, Project Patterns is my place to share my love and enthusiasm for pattern cutting with all of you. I offer online courses, one-to-one -one lessons and free tutorials just like this one. If you want to see more of it, head over to my website or you can find me on all the social platforms. Okay, so every month I choose a topic and I deep dive into that topic. This month's topic is how to use shapes in your patterns. So kind of geometric pattern cutting. When I say shapes, I'm thinking about circles. I'm thinking about squares and rectangles. I'm thinking about triangles, all these kinds of shapes. Now, your pattern piece doesn't have to be only that shape. You can incorporate multiple different shapes in one garment. You can cut holes out of your shapes. You can cut slashes into your shapes. You can fold them, you can twist them, you can do whatever you want with them. This area of pattern cutting is so exciting because it gets really experimental. Instead of working in a commercial way where you get given a sketch and you create your pattern to achieve that sketch, you're now using your pattern to influence your design. We're almost draping here, right? We're getting really creative with our pattern cutting and with our designing. Now, this idea of using shapes within our patterns isn't new. We see this throughout history and we also see modern day designers reinterpreting this idea in their new designs. So historically, we see things like the ancient Greeks wearing things like togas, which are basically just rectangles, right? Tied and knotted in different ways. We also see the ancient Egyptians doing something quite similar. We also see a Japanese kimono, which is made up of a series of different rectangles all stitched together. One reason why historically rectangles were used is because that textiles were so much more valuable back in the day. So the idea of cutting into fabric and wasting pieces like we do now for modern day clothing production was almost blasphemous. Handwoven, you're not going to waste a single scrap. So on that note, another place that we see geometry in our pattern cutting is areas like zero waste pattern cutting, which is more of a modern idea. So I'm going to share a couple of links to useful zero waste pattern cutting books and websites in the show notes here as well if you want to look more into that. Another place where we see shapes coming into our patterns is with really experimental designers. So maybe not modern day, but also not quite ancient Greeks. Uh, we see it in original Balenciaga stuff. We see it with designers like Madame Grey. We see it with designers like Pierre Cardin, where they took interesting shapes and reinvented how we use those shapes around the body. They use them to create really interesting pockets of detail. They folded them in interesting ways. A good example of this is the envelope dress by Balenciaga, uh, kind of like a rectangular shape, pleated at the shoulders. It's really, really beautiful. Uh, Madame Grey also had a dress that was on bias and was folded in various different ways to kind of go around the body, creating another really beautiful, interesting silhouette. Um, and Pierre Cardin as well was very well known for using this technique. So more modern day designers that we see this in are people like Issey Miyake in his origami collection, um, people like Yoji Yamamoto, Comme de Garçon, uh, Isabel Tolado, these kinds of more experimental designers, we see this way of working in their work. OK, so what are we actually going to look at this month? So like I said, basic shapes. Now, the things I'm going to show you are just going to be more introductions or tasters into this world. There are so many different roads you could take when you're exploring this world that I just want to give you that little taster and then you can pick the direction you want to go. So the ideas we're going to explore are ones like what happens if we take a circle and we put some cleverly placed cuts in it and we use those as armholes. Maybe we put sleeves on them. What happens? To give you an idea, this is a garment here. Circle, cuts. I'm going to pop this on the mannequin and show you what it happens. So this is what it looks like when it's actually on the body. You can see I've held it together with a pin here. Maybe it'd be a button or a loop and a hook, whatever. My cleverly placed cuts here are my armholes. And the top half of my circle folds over to create a lovely little cowl at the back. If I spin that around for you, you can see there's our little cowl that we get there, a little fold over collar and cowl. This idea came from when I was at the V&A and I saw a really beautiful piece in their um, collection there. I'll pop a photo of that in there too for you. Another idea that we're going to explore is what happens when we take two circles and stitch them together. What happens when we get this kind of like sack shape with this beautiful fullness in the middle? 
well, how do we take this sphere and turn it into a dress? We'll have a little look at how we do that. We're also going to look at how we can take rectangles and squares and fold them and cut into them to create clever shapes. So something like this is a rectangle with some cleverly placed cuts and holes. This folds up into a T-shape to make a tunic or a coat, whatever you desire, really. Folds up like this. So we'll have a look at how to do that too. We'll look at a heap of different examples. Some of them are really small little tricks you can do. Some of them are bigger things like these ones that we've discussed here. I've also made a huge Pinterest board for you with tons of images and diagrams that hopefully should be really inspiring for you and just get you thinking about how we can use shapes in our patterns and our garments. So I'll link that in the description below and you can have a little look. Let me know if there's anything that really tickles your fancy. Like I said, this is part of a video series, so there'll be a couple more videos coming out with these sort of tutorials more in depth in there. Um, remember to like and subscribe so that you can be updated when the new videos come out. All of that jazz. Um, and there will also be a live session at the end of the month where I do a live tutorial for you and you can ask questions at the end. So if you have any questions over the month, save them for that tutorial and pop along and we can have a nice chat about it. In the meantime, I'll see you later.